good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, March 18th, 2024, Berlin Select Board to order. With us tonight, uh, to my left, is Flo Smith and Joe Staub. To my right is Dora Nelson our, and our acting town administrator. And I am Brad Town, and the first order of business is Select Board Reorganization. I nominate Brad Town to be the chair for the year. Second. Any other nominees? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, vice chair? I nominate uh, Florence Smith to be vice chair for the year. I second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And secretary? I nominate Joe Staub to be the secretary. Second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Additions or changes the agenda to our? I uh, have one I'd like to add uh, appointment of the fire department's um, merger steering committee uh, appointment. Okay. Um, Dan, Dan? Hmm? Where? Where are we? Okay. Um, of course, if Janet's here for it, we could, no, okay. Uh, public comment? Hearing none. Um, anything? Um, if I might, um, I just wanted to ask, and maybe it's good that Tim's here, if there's any plans this summer to have more commercial trucks parked back here in addition to Lucas, I don't know. Any of the big contractors that are coming for the pipeline and whatnot, if they had asked. I'm just asking, if possible, that we keep it to a minimum. What pipeline? Oh, there's one going in out here out Scott Hill Road, right, for our water system. Oh, well, that's, that's nowhere near even. That may be a year or two, you think? Is that what you think? Yeah, so, yeah. 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 that's a year or two away, and that's uh, going to be up by. Uh, the airport I'm trying to think and I thank you for you know when the big over-the-road trucks come with the sand and dirt when they got their jake brakes on it shakes my house now I get it they're loaded you know coming down there they got to make that corner and I'm mm. glad that going out it'd be nice if they switch them off you and your guys I think always switch them off ours aren't very loud and I thank you for that thank you like any other comments Hearing none, um, the select board goals for the year. Tour. Just want you to uh, think about what you know you want to see us accomplish for the year. Uh, we'll go over this again in another meeting or two, but think about what you want done. Everybody's got their ideas they want to see the board do, and I want to make sure we capture them and get them on the agendas for the uh, future meetings. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, um, Green Mountain Power right away permit. So this is in your packet. <coughs> uh, Green Mountain Power doing work on Addison Drive. Uh, Bellevance Landworks would be the contractor. There's a map of the uh, project and uh, pretty extensive uh, description of the work they will be doing. Uh, Tim, did you get a chance to look at this? Yeah. Any issues with it? No. Mm -hmm. Pretty much seems they'll patch the road back in where they cut the black off. And it's only one, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, it's only one crossing in the black top. The other one's down in the dirt section. So and they're going to concrete it anywhere so that it crosses the surface. Because down below it's going to go over the sewer line. So this is buried? Yeah. Very cool. <clears throat> I may 
make the motion to approve the right of, right away permit for the Green Mountain Power Addison Drive. Um, and basically, on, in terms of which side, et cetera, it says Addison Drive on the left-hand shoulder headed north, crossing Addison Drive near Poplar Street, continuing down behind BSHA on Addison Drive on the left-hand shoulder and crossing below to feed the existing pad mount transformer and repairing the existing primary underground, replacing and repairing. Second. Any further discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, okay, loader purchase. So Tim has uh, obtained some pricing on the loader. I don't make a copy of it for myself, but um, I'll get this one. I've had a chance to read it. Uh, three vendors he's looked at. One is the Caterpillar 938. Uh, sale price of two hundred sixty-four thousand. A trade in a fifty-five thousand. Uh, total price of two hundred nine thousand. Uh, the John Deere six twenty-four. Uh, sale price of two hundred seventy-six thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Trade in a fifty-nine thousand gives a total price of two hundred seventeen eight fifty-seven. And the Komatsu WA320, sale price of $251,500. Trade-in of $50,000, gives us a total price of $201,500. Um, I know you've had the Komatsu out here for the yeah, last the week last or the week, week before, yeah. looking at it. Uh, your recommendation is the Caterp Caterpillar. Um, You've had good experience with cat products before. Yeah, you <coughs> got the grader and everything else. Mm -hmm. Well, I see that the with the, the um, caterpillar is mid range on the hours, but they have a two year more on their warranty. They have a better warranty, right? Mm -hmm. Now, do they offer any extended? Uh, I believe that's as far out as they go. I can ask because I asked them for. That's the same warranty that we have on the grader. The one we bought the grader, that's yep. the same warranty that we got there. And I almost think that might be as far out as they go. He didn't say any longer than that. The machine you've got now, how many hours a year do you put on it? <sighs> I don't. Off the top of my head, I would know. I'd have to look at the computer. But, you know, I mean, it's... So 2008, it's got 70, almost 7,200 hours on it right now. Wow. So, it's, mm -hmm. so as far as repairability, the Caterpillar is the better choice. Who's, who, where do you get your Komatsus? Anderson? Uh, yeah, that one would be from Anderson. Are they all comparable in size? Yes. They're as close as they can be. Between dealerships. Have you used, have you used, hey, what are you seeing for the Komatsu efficiency? Fuel? Uh, they're all pretty close to the same thing. I mean, they're all tier four engines now, so they're yeah. all the same. And the Komatsu and the CAT are almost identical as far as transmissions. They're hydrostatic. So it's, um, the CAT has the auto diff in it. So it, yeah. it takes the wear. It's, cut back on wear on tires. It's auto. So that one does auto <clears throat> instead of manual, like the one we have now. But is there a certain efficiency by you have the cat grader and if you get the cat loader and you might have another piece of equipment, I don't know. Is it like you just call Milton up there and they send a service guy and they service they both pieces? If you have, we do all our normal maintenance anyway. Warranty work is good to go. Whatever. We yeah. all so that's not a big deal. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> um, we've looked at all of them. Like, of course, like we had the Kamatsu here for a week. The guys didn't really like it. It's tippy. We wobbles a lot. Um, it doesn't have, it's very plain. 
phone. The seat isn't very comfortable. The steering wheel doesn't like the steering wheel. If I sit in it, the steering wheel is like on my almost touching my yeah. knees. Like it doesn't even come up. Like you're constantly bent over. Like I ran it for a few hours, loading trucks and cleaning the yard up one day. <laughs> my back hurt from just being hunched over steering it around the yard. But you know what I mean, they're all nice because they're all new, but. What's availability? Um, Komatsu and I think John Deere would be the quickest because when I talked to her, they had already had their order placed in and they had a bunch that were looking to be delivered sometime April-ish on their schedule. Um, but they were saying you know, it could be three months. Same thing with Komatsu. Uh, Cat is a little bit longer. By a few months, they're thinking middle summer. Yes, yeah, six could be. It, you know, what I mean, it all depends. It's yeah. you and mean? that's and I should have you know preface this is for the fiscal year 2025 budget, um, but that's why we're starting this now um, in case there are uh, delivery delays and stuff. You know, I'm not looking to take um, delivery now. <laughs> of this until, you know, after July, and it is in the budget, but I um, want to make sure there aren't any delivery delays or anything. We've, we've got it covered, so that's why it's on the agenda for tonight. And, uh, and this kicked, uh, actually does come in under what we had budgeted for. That's always a good thing. Did you also, did you have all three of them to use? <coughs> we went to Milton, up to Richmond, and, and looked at, and tried one in the yard up there. Um, Berry City took purchase of the uh, 624 midwinter. Uh, we went down, ran their loader around their yard, played in the dirt pile, spent the better part of an hour going over it. It's pretty much identical to what we currently own type deal. I mean, there's not a lot of difference there. Um, so yeah, we, we went and looked at all three of them and, and did what we could. If the choice were yours to make, you like the pet. Right? Yeah, ergonomics and everything else, yeah. That and it's cheaper well not the cheapest but it's I think it's the best deal for our money versus warranty machine and longevity yeah I like the warranty with it too yeah. okay um, so do we have a motion I'll make a motion to go with the caterpillar 938 for the price, the sales price of $264,000. Uh, There's any, any further discussion? So, regardless of, of the time delay and, and taking ownership of it, they're going to give us that for a trade in mm -hmm. now in six months. Well, so, what we'll do is, as long as you guys approve it now, as I will contact them tomorrow, we'll sign a sales and purchase agreement, set the order, and then they'll place the order and then we'll get it. Um, it'll be delivered. And that most of for the sales price and not for the total price. Because I wasn't sure on that. The only thing I'm wondering is, is that once you uh, sign the purchase agreement, if this one out here blows up, What's that? I don't foresee it happening, but you never know. But I just wondering I mean, if it's it the same deal with the grader. You know what I mean? Yeah. We had to wait for the grader, and we ran ours. Yeah, with a string in a prayer. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if Caterpillar will still honor the price if the, something happens to this little. I would assume so. I can text Jeff right now. I'm sure he'll. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. When you have money in hand, which you will, I think, by the vote coming up, 
that might grease the wheels a little bit, you know, right? Your machine may show up a little earlier. Oh, we got the money. <laughs> If we agree to this, is it going to be good even if something happens to this loader out here? I'm not thinking of a mechanical failure, but if you said the electronics were, the wires and whatnot were getting a little frayed. No, not with that one. I'm more concerned with the ROP system in that loader than, yeah. than much other than okay. that. It, the cab's getting tender. I mean, it leaks water in the front windows because there's no, the front of the cab's rotted from down on the bottom of the windshields from all the years of yeah. road salt. And now you said that was leaking onto the ECM? No, not that one, no. Okay. No, but the door to that side is rotted through. You know, yeah. It's, because that door that covers all the electrical panels on that right hand side. The bottom of it's rotted right through, but just that door panel alone was almost a thousand bucks. Yeah. For a eighteen by eighteen metal door. Oh god. I I would have never thought that it would have cost that much. Just a paint. <laughs> yeah. I think we can probably forego it and uh, uh, go on with the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Um, okay, paint turnpike north repairs update. So Tim had checked in with the state on the availability of a Bailey Bridge across paint turnpike. Uh, anywhere from 80 to 100 grand just to commandeer one. Not that, and then it needs the site work on top of. I mean, it, they said the price could vary depending on like availability and availability for a contractor with a crane because um, they kind of line that all up, I guess. With the, with the rental of the bridge, and then they need either the person with the crane would have the equipment to do the site work to set the bridge, or you'd have to find somebody to do the site work to set the bridge or make the abutments. And then, so it's like 80 to 100 to get the bridge, and then you would have to do a monthly uh, lease agreement, rental agreement. What's that one? They didn't even tell me. They said that would be a um, longevity thing. Like it would, how yeah, long we need it for. The price goes down. You know. they, didn't, they, they didn't give me a monthly price. They just said that it would, would vary on how long we'd have it and whatnot. <laughs> Let's say Fisher Road, how long was that down? Two and a half, three years? Two years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of it was waiting for engineering. Right. And was that for a one or two lane? I believe it was two lane. Two lane, okay. Yeah. They didn't specify though, and I guess I didn't clarify either. I kind of assumed. When we were talking about a two-lane road to 
they would know that I meant a two lane bridge. They, they, you know, I mean, they were aware of where it was going to go, so they knew what it needed. So, if we put this in, when it comes to putting in the new new uh, culvert, this bridge would have to come out first. Mm -hmm. And they might be able to utilize it as a temporary bridge just off the roadway. I could doubt it. It's not, they'd have to fill all the land in over there, and then it's all wetland on that side anyways. That was half the reason why Wayne couldn't do anything. You know, on that lower side, the water line goes through there. The hydro, there's a fire hydrant right there. The water line's on that side of the guardrail. Sewer line's like right there. It can probably all be done with money. Well, that and torches. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, what if we invited somebody here to the select board meeting, and I'm not putting down Tim in any way, but somebody like that has built these before, like the contractors that built it down on, well, 302, and I don't know, there's several places. Yeah. I'm sure, and Tim may even know the companies. I'm wondering if we need kind of like somebody that's been there, done it, can really advise us. Is that something worthwhile? And I'm not sure how it will work with federal aid. I never did get an answer. Probably should have called them back today. Cool. They were going to give me an answer back whether we would even be able to claim this under an emergency or we'd have to flip the bill entirely because we've already told them that we wouldn't take emergency. Um, money to do an emergency opening, temporary opening. We already said no. Um, Barrytown had one. Um, denied the same week that I was talking to them about, they said, because they tried to do something similar. They didn't say which project it was, they just said that they had said no to begin with and then changed and then they denied the project. Well, that could be the road that it's being, the project was on as well. Like I said, I they, they did not tell me if you're going to get a hold of them tomorrow or this week, we can postpone this to the next meeting, table it to the next meeting, then we so have more information. Like, what would you like to know? But I can definitely get information. Uh, the, well, first thing would be, of course, availability of the bridge, um, and then the next thing would be if the feds were going to take in, you know, eighty percent or whatever they usually do for these, this type of thing. I mean, if they're not going to fund it, it's all going to be on the town. That's big. <laughs> you know, I. Uh, yeah, it's not doable. Yeah, it's, it's big. priced out too far. So just find out that, and uh, I don't know if you can, what the time period is for them to okay a project like this. I don't know. I definitely, I can definitely ask, but. Yeah. Because I mean, I hate taking spend a, over a hundred grand and then just take and tear it all out and throw it away. So, what are we taking? See what you can find out, Tim, and we'll uh, motion on tabling. I make the motion to table this until the next select board meeting. Second. Any other discussion? Can I comment? Sure. <laughs> um, to me, uh, uh, I mean, a hundred thousand um, dollars doesn't necessarily sound like. A, a lot um 
in in respect to you know the the overall cost of this the the impact on not just emergency services but but traffic in general um you know i mean i i go to the dentist i go here i go there you know people know that i'm on the fire department and not that it's but it, you know so many people have asked like what is being done with this road i mean it's it's a it's a it's a big deal i mean it's it's a really big deal um you're you're forcing our vehicles and and just so much more traffic out into like 62 um the hospital intersection um yeah it, it impedes you know people coming from montpelier it impedes you know us going to the hospital and and you know and and even just accessing folks that maybe in a, in an emergency situation like on, on you know on Payne Turnpike on Berlin Street um on Stewart Road I mean there's it's it's a big impact so to me $100,000 doesn't necessarily sound but like it's 100,000 just to get the bridge that's you're looking at probably anywhere from three to four, maybe five hundred thousand extra, depending on how long it takes for the paperwork to go through to get the process started to even get to the replacement part. So, you know, what I mean, it's just a hundred thousand to get the bridge. That's not set. The, or that's not to site work or whatever. I don't even know what they pay a monthly fee for that bridge. Well, it's have a, you ever heard of a, so a it's, price? It's, I don't that's know. the thing is, is you know, like, you're, you're throwing out what it all could be, but we don't know what it is. And, and, and until we have someone come in or we get more information. The additional information will be very helpful. Yeah. Like you said, you were hoping that they understood two lane, but they may have been quoting what they perceive as one lane. Well, so even that, that is going to be important so to know. know that it's a two lane. Right. Right. So when you when you take in um, uh, check with the availability of the of the Bailey Bridge, uh, you can take and see what the timetable is. Uh, I'm trying to think the uh, and try to also get the monthly rental fees for it. And at the same time, hopefully, we can be pushing the state to do the engineering on the road well, it's itself. The same, it's all the same people. It's all the same group. Yeah. Well, can, I, can the bridge be put in in such a way that they then, when it's ready, come put the culvert underneath? No, because it's not. Then take the bridge away? No. no. No, can't do it that way? No, the bridge is going to be pretty low okay. to the road. Because that. Well, the, we don't even know what the design is. I'm guessing it's probably going to be the same design as Fisher Road, which is going to be a wide bottom, multi plate. But yeah. I mean, it may not be the same engineers. They might try to do something different. They might not want a live bottom. Would well, be I'm awfully sure. foolish for them to change their <laughs> in, the middle, in the middle of the stream. Well, that's it. Like I, like I said the other day, it's kind of. You would think that they'd almost just take the Fisher Road design and just move it over. Move it over. Mm -hmm. But well, I if they they never, but never come to be, and yeah. they do things. But even even with that, the the trick is here is going to be to take in uh, find out what the cost of the Bailey Bridge is, and hopefully we can get the state going, get a design so we can get those concrete pieces ordered. But remember that was the other issue with the. Right. Uh, Fisher Road was the the, the, um, the nearest the concrete place was down in New York State somewhere. Let's hope this time they don't make a mistake on the footings. Like they did last time. Because one of the permit processes is going to take six to eight months, I told you. The paperwork process. 
be yeah. one of these. I don't know if you've showed them the 35. Things that we got to do in line of all of this. Yeah. To come to kind of compliance of their stuff. So. Hmm. No way we can just fill those holes in and temporarily and. No, because it won't stay because it hasn't stayed. It's gotten way worse now. Yeah. Is it growing? Yeah, well, there's not much left down there now. Really? Any other discussion on this? Thank you for doing the research. Um, all those in favor of tabling this? Aye. Uh, Aye. Motion carries. Um, flood damage at Darling and Junction Roads. So this is another project to be paid for by the feds. <coughs> Got two culverts. Uh, one on Darwin Road and one on Junction Road. Uh, that we went out for bids on for engineering services. We received four bids back. Uh, they are included in your packet. One is from Otter Creek Engineering for $59,000. One is from Premier Engineering, uh, which is a brand new outfit out of uh, Northfield for $99,600. Uh, for Wright and Pierce Engineering for $247,780. And one from New England Consulting for $37,000. What was Wright? $247,780. So my recommendation is to go with the Otter Creek Engineering uh, proposal. I concur with that. I think they are very well known. They do good work and it's substantially less expensive as well. Mm. So is that a motion tour? Just see what. Yes. Was that a second flow? Yes, it was. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, appointment of representative to the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Uh, so we have Theron Lay Sleeper uh, online with us. Um, is it official yet, Theron? Can I say? Yes, it is. Uh, okay, so first of all, congratulations to Theron. We all know him. He's on our uh, planning commission and uh, was at town meeting and everything. Uh, he is the new general manager of the management district. Did I say that right, Theron? Uh, replacing um, Dan Casey. Um, so Grant, congratulations on him for that. Uh, but also at the town meeting, uh, Matt Levin uh, you know, stated that he was stepping back from the uh, Berlin's representative and would stay on as an alternate. Uh, we had uh, appointed another representative who went and became the treasurer of the management district, so he's now a non-voting member of the board. Uh, so we're back to the point of looking for a new representative, and Peg Nonley, uh, who we all know as one of the justices of the peace, uh, heard it there at town meeting and stepped up to be the uh, representative for the uh, Solid Waste Management District, so I'll make that motion to appoint Peg. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Go ahead and do your vote. I just want to introduce myself afterwards. Well, why don't you talk control and make the vote? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, just wanted to introduce myself uh, as, as Tour mentioned, Joe from the Planning Commission. Uh, but I wanted to let you know that if you, if you 
you want to reach out to me if you have any questions about what we do or our organization uh, or just about managing solid waste in general, I'm happy to, uh, to speak with you, come meet with you, and, um, and help you navigate anything that you're, that you're trying to figure out as far as our, our work goes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thanks. All those in, f in favor of the appointment? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations. Uh, let's see here. Uh, capital improvement plan. So now Theron is uh, switching his hats from the Solid Waste Management District to the Planning Commission. Um, you know, one of the things I've really been pushing for the last several months is improve capital planning and capital budgeting and um, looking ahead more as far as what we're spending our money on and um, when we're spending it and being more proactive on that instead of doing things like we did with the roads with Pine Hill Drive this year, putting it off, putting off for another year. You know, let's develop a a, um, a plan for this. Um, so I sent out an RFP, uh, which is in your packet for uh, consulting services for development of an asset capital improvement plan. Uh, we received two uh, proposals back. Um, one is from uh, Stone Shore Municipal Consulting in Richmond and another from Seam Solutions in Barrie. Um, Theron and I, you know, Theron on behalf of the Planning Commission reviewed both of these uh, proposals. Um, they both came in under budget. Uh, Stone Shore, one of the principals is somebody widely known to us here in Berlin is uh, Carl Rogers, uh, the former Barrytown manager, uh, and then also um, Ron Rajensky, uh, who's a former uh, town administrator, I believe, in Richmond. Um, I was very tickled to receive the proposal from uh, Carl Rogers. Um, if you know, when I was you know first looking at what we want in a uh, capital improvement plan, um, you know, I was immediately uh, told to look at what Barrytown does, and if, you know, if I were to try to do it on my own, I would copy or uh, as I say, best practices of what Barrytown does. Uh, so I really do like the experience uh, that he brings. Uh, their proposal is for $26,800. Uh, the other proposal from Scene Solutions is uh, Stephanie uh, Magnan. Uh, she was an engineer uh, with uh, VTrans um, and also did a lot of work with uh, Vermont Emergency Management in the State Emergency Operations Center. Um, her cost came in at $21,550. Um, but looking at the two, um, I think that the Stone Shore would be a plan that we could use that we would actually use, and not just something pretty to sit on the shelf and gather dust, but something that we could use, we could update, it be a living document that we could base our decisions off of, you know, not just now, but for the future. Um, you know, Theron, I, I think you're in, you know, similar thoughts as that. That's right. Um, yeah, I, I found the, the Stone Shore proposal to be overall the better value of the two. Um, based on having the two consultants versus one and the wealth of experience that they bring to the table, uh, I did think that that was the, the better proposal of the two. And they set out with an 11 month schedule, am I understanding that right? I believe that's what it was correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. To me, that sounds like an excellent rate for the time period that they would expend um, working 
on our behalf. I concur. So I'll make the motion to approve the capital improvement plan contract to Stone Shore Municipal Consulting uh, with that this be paid for with ARPA funds. Here's a second. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, ice rink engineering bid. So, <clears throat> this is in your packet as well. Um, a couple pages of the um, anticipated um, expense of the full um, ice cream free development. As you remember, we have the uh, bond vote on this back in November. Um, basically putting a solar canopy on top and turning it into a four season um, facility, uh, anticipating like pickleball and basketball and possibly even tennis and things like that. Uh, in addition to the um, winter ice skating and hockey uh, use. Uh, the first step Early in, in obtaining the bond is you're going to do the engineering work, um, which uh, RFP was sent out and Du Bois and King uh, was selected as the best value at uh, just under $52,000. Um, so recommend uh, award of that contract to Du Bois and King. Um, that second page is, you know, until, um, you know, we get the bond in place to cover that, the funding for the 51000 uh, that the town would cover that through a bridge loan uh, to be paid back. So I'll make that motion. And actually, I shouldn't make that motion, but I, I would recommend um, Du Bois and King. Uh, be awarded the contract with the, the bridge loan authorizing the town administrator to sign on behalf of the town. So moved. You're a second? A second. Any discuss any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Personnel policy update. So I mentioned this uh, a couple weeks ago, and there's a copy in your packet um, of things that I would like to see us start looking at as far as updating the personnel policy. Um, first of all, is the on page nine the boot allowance uh, currently at $150 per fiscal year. I'd like to, I would recommend that be increased to probably $300. Um, next is on page 10, um, under paid vacation day. Well, actually, make, let's back up. Um, bottom of page 9, top of page 10 is the list of paid holidays during the year. Um, so I don't know if the board is inclined to make any additions to that list or not, but something to think about. Uh, two possibilities would be uh, MLK birthday uh, and also uh, June 19th, uh, Juneteenth um, holidays. Um, so that's for consideration uh, to think about. Uh, then on page 10, under paid vacation days for the first year employment, uh, paid vacation days will accrue at the rate of four hours per pay period to a maximum of 40 hours. However, no vacation time may be utilized until the employee has completed six months of employment. So four hours over six months does not equal 40 hours. Okay. So I think that needs to be clarified. And my, my recommendation just be a straight, you know, 40 hours for the first year. And because that's how the rest of the... Um, years are uh, 
laid out, uh, you know, 80 hours, per, you know, 120 hours, nothing, just keep it uniform through all, all of those. Um, bottom of page 11 under sick leave. Uh, Full-time employees may accumulate sick leave at four hours per pay period to a maximum of 160 hours. I would recommend removing that cap of 160 hours, that there'd be no limit on the amount of sick leave uh, you can carry on the books. Um, at my old job, that's how it was. I had, you know, over 2,500 hours of sick leave. Um, on the books at one point, and I had to use 1,600 hours of it in one year, um, and I, you know, I didn't use a penny of pay. So, um, to me, I don't think we're out anything by, you know, extending that cap. Um, I don't want to get in a situation where, you know, somebody's getting up to the 160 hours, uh, maybe they're sick <laughs> that day, and the federal government we called it first flu, so they don't lose any of their of their time off here. Get that something. Right. To think about, I'm not mm -hmm. saying we should, but that's be a, a recommendation I make. Uh, and I think that's all of the updates I had. So I, I know it's probably been a while since you guys have looked at this. Mm -hmm. um, there was one that I had talked with Vince about. Was our comp time? We're only allowed 40. I had talked to him, couldn't possibly maybe go to 80. That's like on PG. In the wintertime, so we can kind of, if we get a couple of weeks of long hours, we lose quite a bit of pay through taxes. And if we get to put something in the comp time, they might be able to take a day off here or there when the weather's a little nicer. And we wouldn't possibly lose. It's the way it was when I was at B-Trans, we were allowed 80 hours of comp per year. I'm good with that, I'll figure that in. But, yep. You know, I'm not, not to make decisions tonight, but I uh, wanted to put this on your radar to start reading through it and, and see what other updates you might have for this. Excellent. A pair of boots is $300 now, or a good pair of boots? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. They're more if they're made in the United States. Really? If you buy a pair of Chippewas that were made in the United States, they're about four to four fifty, depending on Those right there, probably. These yeah. are almost 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else on this? If not, um, Town meeting recap. So a couple uh, takeaways from town meeting is on the local options tax. Um, the charter change packet uh, Rachel sent to the Secretary of State, which is a process that goes through to be sent to the legislature. Uh, so that was done last week. I've not seen anything yet uh, as far as a um, bill being introduced in the legislature or anything. Um, I'm kind of skeptical if they'll get to it this year or not. Um, you know, they got a lot of their big bills to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fairly straightforward thing. You know, a lot of towns have been through the options tax at this point and everything, and, and nothing controversial, but it's just a matter of their mm -hmm. timing and getting it through their committee schedules and, and everything like that. So I, you know, realistic, I'd be happy if it passes this, this session, but realistically, I'm not so sure it will. Well, our representatives said that it shouldn't be an issue. She don't think it would be an issue, but... She's the one to show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about implementing the, the local option tax? Correct. Or, yeah. or getting approval from the state. Well, the state has to, to approve it down at the The capital. legislature has to approve it, correct. Oh, golly. Well, did we so. get our legislators to kick butt on that? <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think they will. It's just, it's... And they know, well. and it's, you know, like I said, it's it's a fairly straightforward thing at this point. They've been through it, you know, with so many other, and it's it's just a standalone uh, <coughs> item. We're not trying to do, you know, five or six other charter proposals in the same, you know, which sometimes gets bogged down. 
you know, what these other cities and towns are doing. So, uh, to me, it looks like a quick and easy thing to do, but they don't ask me, they don't consult with me on these things, so. Hey, but we have a state mushroom now. Oh, yes. I heard, yeah, she, that was funny. I was reading Ann's thing about the mushroom. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I just want to say you guys, Select Board and Tim, did a, I thought did a great job getting the word out about the one and a half acre deal and about the local option tax. You know, I saw the video, you were in the truck and you were interviewing them. And, and it, you, I don't know, you guys had a little marketing campaign on Front Porch Forum and various places. Well, it worked. Good job. Thank you. And I, and I like to do more of that. You know, I know in the past we used to have a newsletter. Um, I don't know if I want to go quite that formal, but, you know, maybe a series of front porch forms, postings it's throughout the year there. or something. Mm -hmm. um, was, might be better than, than a, you know, a full newsletter and stuff mm -hmm. that we've done in the past. Probably been 10 years mm -hmm. or so something since we've done the newsletter. Okay. Anything else on the town meeting? Uh, no. Okay. Um, uh, town treasurer. Assume fire department bookkeeping. Ah, to assume. Okay. Um, so this has been a subject that's been floated around in the past. I don't even say it's been discussed. But it's been floated for probably about three, three plus years before. Uh, so currently the fire department uses batch order for their bookkeeping um, and that comes at an expense of uh, 1200 a month it's plus fees that I understand so it's sure. expensive for what the I mean I mean we see in the in the orders tonight you know we see what's involved in, in financially side from running the fire department um, and we feel that the treasurer department now has the capacity to take on those duties uh, for the fire department. Uh, we met with the president and the, well, the chief and the treasurer today, worked out some, um, um, some of the questions that everybody had regarding this. And we are comfortable at this point preparing a proposal proposal to move forward or, or to present to the fire department corporation I guess technically to move forward on this um, in reality we're looking at you know half a dozen to a dozen checks per week that you know the invo uh, fire department has to pay so it's not a huge amount compared to you know, the, the big stack we have here for the town, um, you know, the finances, you know, middle school can compare to, you know, the town's finances. Um, we think we can, you know, do it um, cheaper than what they're being charged. Uh, we think we can provide a better service, uh, timely service. Um, they get reports six weeks or so after the end of the month. Uh, they're, they're, about, yeah, six weeks behind. Um, whereas, and I was going to do it tonight, I did not, you know, we can, you know, through Nemrick, we can run it, I don't say real time, but we can run one immediately um, on demand for them, uh, you know, provide them much quicker um, numbers that they need for their operations. Um, so, um, I don't know, Joe, you want to chime in or Janet or... Well, like I said, uh, you, you said earlier, you know, we've been talking about this for a few years or whatnot. Um, I think that the cost of the accounting for, for the fire department, let me back up, before we had Batchelders doing that, before we outsourced it, we were doing it with volunteers. And that was just burning out our volunteers to do so. You're looking at something nearly, you know, quarter million plus um, dollars of a budget and relying on volunteers to do so, you know, efficiently and, and correctly and all that. It's just, that that's why we outsourced it. Um, first time around, we did have like three, um, three entities that, that 
answer the RFP, Guy Shoulders got it. And at that point, it was nearly, it was $900 a month plus expenses. And those expenses were um, programs that they may have had to um, buy to put in place to take care of our finances or postage and handling of, of the, the checks and the invoices they were paying. Um, the contract came due. Um, we ended up putting another RFP out. Five Shoulders was the only one that actually answered it and it increased nearly $300. So, I mean, we're, we're paying something. Um, I think they have a lot of overhead. They have, and, and so I, I kind of get that. Um, I see it probably this, this move, the only thing I see beneficial is being more, um, it's financially responsible for, for the, the money being spent in that one line item. Um, that's all I got to say. And I think with our meeting, I had a meeting with Callie a week or so back, and tonight, I think it's, it's very, very clear that they have time available to do so. And that's wonderful. I've been a proponent of it for quite some time as a liaison between the board and the fire department. I actually suggested it to Joe a couple of years ago. At that point, they were in the middle of a contract, and it wasn't going to expire for a period of time. And we had floated it around through the board, as we said. And uh, there were reasons why we couldn't go forward with it based on staffing, etc. But I think now is a wonderful time to move forward, especially if you've had those conversations and they have the time. And it's really, cost effective. The really the only kicker that I see is that the fire department has to provide 90 days notice to batch elder to cancel right. that contract. Mm -hmm. um, if we're going to do this, I would very much like it to be effective July 1st. Um, because that's, you know, that's been both, you know, these are fiscal year uh, changes over. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be cost effective to do this in the middle of the year or even after a quarter or anything like that. Well, that doesn't mean that, you know, July 1st we have to take it over, but if, if it extends a week or so into the new year before we start writing checks, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, my, my concern is that, that 90 days for July 1st is right around the corner mm -hmm. um, for both for us and for the, you know, the fire department. Um, so if, you know, if we're going to end up doing this, we're going to move pretty quick on this. Um, you know, potentially from our side at the next at our next meeting, which would be April first, and I think your next meeting is April second. So those two dates are um, very close together, and and I think we can work things out before then. And I think after to, uh, this evening's meeting that we had, I think we can have probably a proposal together to give to the board of directors who meets a week from this Wednesday. That's wonderful. And I concur with everything said, and also bachelors have done a wonderful job as well. Yeah. yeah. They, they have, yeah. But basically, we're, we're, you know, we, the fire department's paying exactly. for no. a level of service mm -hmm. that we really don't need. We don't need CPA level of accounting, you know, for these, for these books. And I concur with that. I just wanted to put it out there. They have done a wonderful job. Yeah. We appreciate it. So that's all I have on that, unless anything, anybody has anything else? So we'll have a vote on that April, April 1st. April. Mm -hmm. No fool around. No fool around. Okay. Um, anything else on the fire department bookkeeping? Hearing none. Hearing none. <laughs> well, since you're here, do we want to do the fire, the merger committee appointment? That would be wonderful. Sure. Uh, so unless you want to jump in, Mike Sweeney has stepped away from the merger committee uh, with spring springtime coming up and lacrosse uh, uh, season starting. Uh, so he has stepped down, but Rod Sear. Uh, who we all know, a long-time member, uh, been involved in the fire department since 1973, 
um, has stepped, uh, has offered to join uh, the committee in that capacity. So I will make that motion. And I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulate Rod when you see him. Welcome to Rod. Um, okay. Uh, town traffic and vehicle ordinance. So, I thought this was going to be an easy peasy process. I thought we were just going to have to add Dodge Farm Road for a speed limit and Dodge Farm Road where it enters uh, Scott Hill is a stop sign and that was going to be it. Uh, public warning, public, uh, public hearing has been warned for April 15th on this. Um, Looking it into a little bit more, um, and I've mentioned this before, that um, the section numbers of the, um, as are formatted in the ordinance, I'm going to make those all uniform Roman numerals. Um, I want to correct the spelling of Dog Rover Road to Dog River Road. Um, add in and then correct uh, Partridge Road to Partridge Farm Road, which is its official name. Uh, then we had talked about um, Comstock Road. Changing the speed limit there from 40, um, and in your packet, a separate email. Uh, the response I got from the uh, league as far as setting speed limits um, generally between 50 and 35 miles an hour without conducting a traffic study, but only after considering the neighborhood character abutting land use, bicycle and pedestrian use, and physical characteristics of the highways. Um, so we do not need the engineering study to drop the speed limit on an unpaved class three town highway to 35, but we do have to consider those factors, um, which I think all play into the proposed 35 mile an hour speed limit on that road, uh, you know, the proposed 35 mile an hour speed limit um, versus the 40 that it's currently set at. So um, I've updated the draft to reflect the 35 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, we'd also talked about increasing the fines uh, for certain violations. I've increased the handicap zone, the fire lane and fire hydrant to $150, uh, which I think is still reasonable. Now comes the issue. Um, Tim called me last week about the speed limit on Goodnow Road and Marvin Road and starting to look at the ordinance there are Twenty-six roads 26, yeah. that do not have a speed limit listed in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Majority of these are very short roads, which to me is okay. You know, Browns Mill Road extension. Right. I'm okay with there not being a speed limit for for that uh, oversized driveway. However, Warner Road, uh, which is there off of uh, Airport Road across from Blue Cross Blue Shield, is posted for 35 miles an hour. I looked at it as I drove by yesterday. So there is some uh, mismatch between what these roads are posted at and what the what's in their ordinance. So, you know, I can add Warner Road 35 miles an hour to our draft. But I think to do it properly, um, I think we want to take a look at all these roads and make sure 
if there's not a speed limit, that we're okay with that, and if there is, and we need to reflect it in the um, ordinance that we do that. Mm -hmm. um, so more than likely, we will not be holding that public hearing on the 15th, but we'll have to rewarm that for a different date. And I, I show this list to Tim, and we'll be working on it over the next. I'm gonna go around because some of these do have signs on them, so we're gonna go around. So if they don't, we would have to post them. You're, you're talking about putting signs up. Not necessarily. No, we I'm have the if, choice if there's not. Yeah, I mean, if there if there's a sign, I think we should add it into the ordinance. Okay. But if there's not a sign and it's not in the ordinance, um, I don't know that we need to establish one for you know, okay. a one tenth of a mile with one watch road. You're right. So you're going to work There'll on be that. more on that to come. Okay. Anything else on the town traffic? Uh, no. Okay. Um, license permits and vouchers. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24-20 for payroll from February 25th to March 9th, 2024 to be paid on March 13th, 2024 in the amount of $60,482.92, payable warrant 24G21 with check number 23780 to 23818 in the amount of $178,034.20, check number 23799 in the amount of $700 for police training and tour approved, Berlin Volunteer Fire Department select rooms orders from July 2023, October 2023, December 2023, in January 2024. Oops. Uh, I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, approval of minutes for February 19th, 2024. I make the motion to approve the Monday, February 19th, 2024 minutes as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, approval of minutes for March 4th, 2024. I also make the motion to approve the Monday, March 4th, 2024 select board minutes. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. In a correction to a September 19th, 2022. Mm -hmm. So this was the meeting where you all approved the police department contract. Um, however, that approval never made it into the minutes and is actually not on the ORCA video for that night either. Um, what I suspect happened is um, you all went into executive session, which is noted in the, uh, the minutes uh, to discuss it, um, and then when you exited out of executive session and formally approved that contract, you know, the, the recordings had stopped at that point and it never, you know, and made it the minutes are generally prepared based on that right. recording, never, so it actually never made it into the uh, approved minutes for that meeting. So uh, we need to add the actual approval of the PD contract to those minutes. And there's just two other things that I noticed in the minutes um, before I would approve them is on page one, 
um, just be just about toward the end, it ends with a question mark, and there's something missing there to that sentence that begins the organization, then brings in outside members, and it ends with dinner at the first meeting and town question mark. It seems like something's missing in that. Um, and then the other thing is on page two, Joe Aluzzi's last name is spelled wrong. But other than that, and adding in what you mentioned, I wouldn't have a problem approving them as long as that area can be looked at and added to, and then changing Joe's last name. Um, I so, so, <laughs> and also on the end, of, let's see, we need actual approval. Okay, Smith approved to adjourn, seconded by Ken. So, I'm guessing they're thinking that was John Quinn. That's Correct. Why been here. So that means you weren't here at the time. Um, no, Joe was was at the time. Joe, I was. Joe, so, okay. Right. So, so that do, so you do have the changed. so you do have the three. Just that who who seconded was most likely right. Joe. That will just need to be looked at on page four. Well, Joe, well, John Quinn was still on the board at that time. I don't believe he was at no. that particular meeting. Not when Carl Parton was on. We're still looking at September 19th. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know. So, <laughs> okay, and you do. You name everybody going in to include whoever the, the select boards members who was present, right? Thank you for that, because we don't know these So. So when we go into executive session and everybody disbands, camera goes away, and then we come out with a decision. Whose responsibility is that to make that, to record the motion and the, the end result of that motion? If there, if there is action, who makes that? Only, I'm only asking. Because I'm the secretary now. Okay. Well, I would say the secretary. Okay. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't at the time. I wasn't at the time. But I'm just saying, is it would it be now my responsibility to do that? Yes, but you have a very nice town administrator who keeps track of those things. Yep. But you see, the the problem the, with, the problem with this was is that even. When the when this when the person doing the transcription did the transcription, she uh, they only had it up to executive going, going in, into, into executive session. Right. That's right. Now it's different now because um, even though when we go into executive session, the camera leaves, and but you know if you see online, Orca is online. Yeah. We put them into the waiting room, and then when we exit out, okay. we put them, put the orca online back into the full meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so from that point, it's recorded. But you know, this was two years, what, a year and a half ago, right. and um, you know, Zoom was still fairly new, and you know, who knows, maybe even orca, you know, cut off at that point as well and didn't come back or anything. So. Mm -hmm. I 
I guess my question is, do you all remember who made the motion and seconded to approve the contract? I honestly do not. I'd be willing to bet it was you, Flo, but... <laughs> it could very well have been me, and Carl could have been the second. Um, I can definitely look back at minutes that I have held on to and see in my notes if I can find that. Um, when, uh, when do you need these, this correction done? Uh, whenever. It's going to be better, but... So first, yeah, take him, put them back onto the agenda on the first. And I'll let you know what I find out for it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, round table full. I do not have anything this evening. Round table, Joe? Oh, let's see. What is that? Hi. Yeah. March 23rd, Saturday, March 23rd. Berlin Fire Department will be having an all-you-can-eat pie breakfast. I expect to see everybody there. It'll be a great event. The community can come together. Um, you'll be entertained by um, many people, but Ray Burke and Sam Burke will be playing as well, and that's your entertainment. Um, last year was a great year, and I expect another one this year. Starting at 9.30 till noon. Folks can bring pies if they want to donate them as well. I'm yes. bringing two. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, the more the merrier, and the more people the merrier. It's always a good time. Anything else, Joe? I think I'm good. Uh, door? Um, I have one. Um, I sent out an email on this last week. Um, Um, the state has opened a temporary shelter in Berlin uh, for those exiting the um, hotel program. Um, it's there on 190 Junction Road, which is the um, a &R Annex. Um, this came about very quickly, um, but I will say that the state um, Agency of Human Services and uh, Buildings of General Services were uh, very accommodating for us. Uh, we put together a uh, conference call very quickly with the police chief and Tom and myself to go over the questions, concerns we had. Uh, they were very accommodating for that. Um, but the, you know, they were anticipating between possibly between 50 and 100 residents at uh, the shelter. Uh, the first night, uh, that Friday night, uh, they had zero. Uh, Saturday night, they had one. And Sunday night, last night, they had zero again. So um, the demand definitely wasn't there. Of course, it's not a great location at all. It's, you know, it's out of the way. It's cut off from services. Uh, it's not on the bus route. Um, you know, there's a lot of things wrong with that location. Um, but Saturday morning, I did reach out to Rick DeAngelis with the Good Samaritan Haven just to see how things went on his end. Um, you know, and, and he said, that, you know, they were very proactive in trying to reach out before that to try to get people into their shelters and stuff. And I think that was very successful in keeping the population down at, at our shelter in Berlin. So um, we're, you know, we'll be continuing to uh, monitor us throughout the week. Um, but at this point, um, doesn't seem to be a, a huge issue or anything. That's wonderful. I'm glad you went over that. I had a resident approach me about it and just asked a few questions, and I had given the same information that no one had stayed the first night. But I think it's wonderful that everyone came together to do that in a short period of time. And they have... Um, Two National Guard on duty at each of the locations and four EMS 
providers there in addition to service agencies, Washington County Mental Health and things like that to mm -hmm. try to get them in a, into more long-term um, facilities and other types of help that they need. And here again, I think the Good Samaritan Haven was very instrumental in that. And there was a time period associated as well, um, like 7 p.m. 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Are they going to keep this open for the scheduled duration, or are they going to feel that out? I've not heard of them cutting back on it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern is if they do cut back. Um, I mean, you know it from emergency management, uh, you know, the power goes out and stuff. People can suffer through it for a day or two. Um, third or fourth day, you know, is when, they, is when sometimes that need goes up. So if they cut it off right now or, or tomorrow, I'm just worried, okay, maybe somebody found something for the weekend, but that's now dried up or not available, that come Wednesday or Thursday, you know, that need might... Uh, surface, and if we've already cut everything off at that point, you know, would would really be stuck. So I would kind of be hesitant about promoting them closing these these uh, shelters early. Mm -hmm. Well, I would also depend on you know what availability a good Samaritan shelter has. Maybe they have capacity at that point and can take on a few extra people or not. Anything else to No. Okay. Um, Berlin Pond water levels, Dicky Dam. So, in your packet is a series of emails uh, basically between the Conservation Commission and the City of Montpelier um, concerning, well, first of all, starting with the Sir? Apologies. Um, City of Montpelier with um, approval from the state has uh, placed some stop, stop logs uh, on the uh, outlet from the Berlin Pond, which has raised the water level of the Berlin Pond. Um, and there's a concern that it's going to affect, among other things, uh, this year's uh, noon loon nesting um, activities. Um, so there's been a good dialogue between the Conservation Commission and the City of Montpelier on this. The other issue is that eventually uh, the city would like to remove uh, you know, the Dickey, Do Dickey Dam, which is, you know, here again, it's got to go through permitting and everything else. It's not going to be a quick process, but uh, in the next couple of years or so, um, you know, something that the city may want to do. I think, you know, we as a board need to be aware of what the city's wanting to do and, you know, make sure we make our voices heard at the appropriate times. It's, you know, yeah, everything's right out here. Yeah. The fire department has a dry hydrant right out there, too. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's another issue to be concerned about with that. Definitely. Yes, sir. Um, so I, this is just mainly for your information, but I, you know, wanted to make you aware of this. Um, you know, quite a few emails going back and forth on that. How old is that dam? Considerably old. Yeah. Uh, the one right here. Old. Is it back to the 1800s? Tom's making reference to 1850. Yeah. That sounds right. Who was read? Yeah. Talk about uh, Mr. Strong. Well, my house is 1845, and that owner of that house, I think, owned the mill at one point. It was built the mill. That's what it says. Since Mr. Strong established the mills at that site and produced provided lumber for which my house was built in 1850, so very likely your lumber as well. So, um, well, the dam held up well. 
This is that old. I can't believe it's that old. Huh. Apparently there are, I don't have the latest inspection report from the dam, but <coughs> excuse me, apparently there are, you know, some issues there. Um, I'll take us a minute. Collapse, but um, Tom's got some ideas <laughs> uh, about yeah. refurbishing the dam and, and so forth. So, anything else on Dickey Dam? No. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Executive session? Uh, we do for uh, two items. Um, move to we enter into executive session for sale lease of property under 1 VSA 313A2 and personnel 1 VSA 313A3. I second that motion. And there may possibly be action afterwards. Uh -oh. Oh. Fortunately, we have a new secretary. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're in executive Aye. session.